Hello, and welcome to Total Training for Microsoft Windows 8. My name is Bob Flisser, and I'm going to show you the screens, applications, and features of a Windows operating system that's really made for the 21st century, with both desktop and mobile users in mind. If you've used Windows before, you'll find that much of it is familiar, but easier to use. If you're a Macintosh user, you'll appreciate the simplicity that Windows never had before. And if you're a Windows Phone user, you'll be right at home. I've been using Windows since version 2 in the late 1980s, and I can tell you that version 8 is the biggest change to Windows in 17 years. But don't let that scare you. I'll have you using it like it's second nature in no time. And to make it easier, I've prepared a quick reference guide for you that has all the shortcuts I use in this course, and a lot more. Throughout this course, I'm going to assume that you're comfortable using a mouse, keyboard, and screen, and that you have computer experience already. I will also assume that you're an end user and not an IT or support person, so there won't be a lot of jargon, and I also won't go into a lot of back-end administration. You should also know that there are two editions of Windows 8. We are going to look at the Pro Edition, which is meant for traditional desktops, laptops, and high-end tablets. Windows 8 also has an RT Edition that's made for less expensive tablets, and we won't look at that at all in this course. The first chapter will help you hit the ground running and be as productive as you can in the shortest period of time. In the remaining chapters, we'll go into more detail. So, let's say you just got your new computer or tablet, you took it out of the box and turned it on, and now you're face to face with a screen of colorful tiles that maybe looks like it was painted by Piet Mondrian. The start screen uses a brand new interface. And if you ever used a Windows smartphone, it'll look kind of familiar. And you can see we have all these tiles laid across. Smaller tiles, larger tiles. And we'll talk about these tiles in a little bit more detail later on. And the Start screen is really a substitute for the Start menu that Windows had in previous versions. So instead of having a narrow scrolling list of all the programs you want, I always found it kind of hard to read, we now have everything kind of laid across the entire screen. And you can see here what's happening is, on my screen anyway, on the left side, these are the apps that come with Windows. And over here on the right side, these are programs that I installed myself. As I said, this is very customizable. Windows does have a desktop. And you can see over here is the desktop, and I'll just click that. And now this brings us into the Windows desktop. So if you're familiar with using the Windows desktop in previous versions, it works pretty much the same way here. The main difference is that in Windows 8, the desktop is really just another application. It kind of serves like a container for other programs that are running. Now, if I want to get back to the start screen from the desktop, there's a couple of ways to do it. One way is I can press on my keyboard the Windows logo key. And you see that brings me back to the start screen. And if I press the Windows logo key on the keyboard again, now it brings me right back to the desktop. Another way I could do it is using one of the four corners of the screen. One thing you'll notice all over the place in Windows 8 is the four corners of the screen are active. They're live. So what I'll do here is I'm going to mouse over the lower left corner of the screen. You see that shows me start and I'll just click. And again, it brings me right back to the start screen. Another new feature of Windows 8 are what are called charms. And I'm going to roll the mouse pointer over to the lower right corner of the screen. And if you're using this on a tablet, you could use your finger to kind of swipe from the right side. But I'm just going to roll over the lower right corner. And you can see these five little icons come up. They kind of go away if I don't do anything. Now, if I go back and bring them up, now you see they have labels. So that way I can just kind of see what these are. And you'll find the charms all over the place. Let me go back to the desktop. I'll just press the Windows logo key, so I'm back on the desktop. And again, I'm going to roll my mouse pointer over the lower right corner of the screen. And if you're using this on a tablet, again, the same thing. You can just kind of swipe your finger off from the right side. And again, I get the charms. And if I roll my mouse pointer up, I can get the labels of the charms. And when I roll my mouse away, of course, the charms go away. Now, let's take a look at those four corners of the screen when I'm running one of the built-in apps. And again, this time, I'll just roll the mouse pointer over the lower left corner of the screen. I'll click, so I'm back on the Start screen. And I'm going to start the Music app. 
can see that's over here. And on your computer, the tile might be larger, it might be in another location. It doesn't really matter, it works the same way. And don't worry about what's on here, we'll talk about the music app in more detail later on. But let's take a look at what's going on. If I roll the mouse pointer over the upper left corner of the screen, you can see that shows me the desktop, so if I click I'll get to the desktop. Back in the lower left corner of the screen, again, there's the start screen. If I roll my mouse pointer up in the upper right, the charms come up, and if I roll in the lower right corner, the charms come up. And you notice they're kind of transparent background, so I could see what's going on. As I said, we'll look at the music app later on. I don't want to do it right now, so I want to close it. You notice there's no close button here anywhere, so what you do is put your mouse pointer or your finger at the top of the screen, and you see how my mouse pointer becomes at hand? I'm going to click and drag down, and when my mouse pointer is down at the bottom of the screen, I let go, and that closes the app, and now I'm back at the start screen. What if I'm using an application that's not one of the built-in apps? You can see over here I have Microsoft Office 2013. I'll just start up Word. So Word 2013 starts up. I'm just going to create a new blank document. This isn't a Microsoft Word class, so I don't worry too much about what's on here. Now, Microsoft Word is not a full Windows 8 application, at least not yet as of this recording. It hasn't been released yet. So you see in the upper right corner, we have kind of the traditional buttons. This is new. We have a full screen mode, but we still have minimize, restore, and close. So while all of the new Windows 8 style programs always run full screen and only full screen, we do have that choice with any of these programs that kind of run the older method. So if I want, I can hit this restore button and now I could run Microsoft Word in the restored state. I'll click the maximize button here and bring it back up. And if I want to close Word, I could do it pretty much the old fashioned way. Notice that when I put my mouse pointer up here at the top of the screen, I don't get the same grabber hand that I did in the music app, but I do have the traditional close button here in the upper right corner, so I'll click that. And now Word is closed. Let me go back to the start screen. And again, I'll start up the music app. Go back to the start screen again. This time I'll roll over the lower left corner and click and I'll also run the Photos app, so I'll just click that. We'll get to both of these in more detail later on. Again, I'm going to roll over the lower left corner, click Start, so I'm back at the Start screen. And maybe I've forgotten which built-in apps I'm running. There's no way to tell just by looking at the screen, so what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to roll my mouse pointer, again, over the lower left corner, so where I got that little pop-up. And I'm not going to click down on the mouse button, I'm just going to move the mouse pointer upwards. And now you can see it shows me tiles of the two apps that are running. So if I want to get to Photos, for example, I could just click it. Now let's go back to the Start screen again. And again, I'll start up Microsoft Word. And I'll go back to the Start screen again. And this time I'll start up Mozilla Firefox. Now, why have I done this? Because right now I have a couple of new style programs running. That's music and photos. And I have a couple of the old style programs running, Mozilla Firefox and Microsoft Word. So how do I get from one to the other? Well, one way I could do it, and this is something that's been in Windows for a long time, is I'm going to put my thumb down on the Alt key on the keyboard. And with my thumb down on the Alt key, I'm going to use maybe my index finger or middle finger to tap the tab key so I can press alt tab and notice what's happening now is I can tab through a number of these programs. So I could go to Firefox or Word that are the old style. I can go to photos or music that are the new style. But what if I want to get just between the new style programs then I'm going to put my thumb down on the Windows logo key instead. And with my thumb down on the Windows logo key, again, I'll use one of my other fingers to tap the tab key. And now you notice that I can get back and forth between any of these new style programs instead. Here's kind of a strange thing, though, is 
Let me go back to, let's say, Microsoft Word. You'll notice that in Word, I can Alt-Tab between all of these various programs, including the desktop. But what I cannot do is, and this is something that's different from Windows 7 or Windows Vista, is I cannot press the Alt-Tab key combination to get back to the Start screen. It just doesn't work that way. So I have to use the lower left corner of the screen or hit the Windows logo key. But when I'm on the Start screen, I can Alt-Tab back into one of these other programs. So it's kind of a one-way street like that. So this might seem a little confusing at first, kind of as though you've got parallel universes here with the modern new style programs running from the start screen and the older style programs running from the desktop. But now you know how to get back and forth between one and the other. Remember, you can simply hold down the Alt key and press Tab. You can hit the Windows logo key to get back and forth. You can roll over the lower left corner of the screen, go to the lower left corner of the screen and move the mouse pointer up. Notice I'm not clicking. And also, you can move the mouse pointer to the upper left corner of the screen, and that will show you whatever program you ran most recently. So it's kind of like a little toggle back and forth between whichever two programs you're running. So in my case, between Word and the Photos app. So even though Windows doesn't show you right immediately all the programs that are running, see, it's really not all that hard to find out.